Guys, how are we? Ben Cooper off Stroke and Limits. Alright, now we're going through some little tips with triathlon and we're going to go into stage two. You've just entered out of exit of the water, you're into transition. Just remember, stay nice and relaxed in transition. You should have had, you've got everything set up on the bike ready to go. Just keep nice and relaxed as you um, you go through. I won't go through the transition, etc. But you, you're getting on, you're mounting onto the bike and a lot of people will start to throw in nutrition straight away as soon as they get on the bike. Sometimes it can cause a bit of an issue in digestion because your heart rate's still up from the swim, you're rushing through. So it's best just to hold off a little bit if you can. You've got enough energy in your system. Um, if it is an Ironman distance, okay, it's a little bit longer, but you probably should have had some water or something as you exit as you um, exit the water into transition anyhow. But um, if it is a shorter distance race because you are pushing at a harder tempo, there's being more blood pulled away from your digestive tract, so it's going to make it harder to digest. So especially if you are already going dehydrated, etc. So just be careful. You're better off um, getting into a rhythm on the bike first. So you're getting on the bike, and you're finding finding a good pace, just locking in. Um, I'll go through the specifics if you are fly mounting or you got your shoes on already on the bike, etc., etc. But um, we'll just keep it brief today. And yeah, so you're getting out on the getting out on the bike and just finding your rhythm on the bike. And depending on what pace it is, it's going to be depending on what threshold, uh, how you're going to pace it, etc. But just hold off from having anything too heavy on nutritionally. Get yourself maybe maybe 10 minutes into into the bike. Now, whether you've got bananas or if you've got few, um, gels or if you've got water, um, um, whatever, you've got to practice in your training. You've got to practice on what on what you know. If it is hotter. It, it, your body's going to be dehydrated a lot faster and it's going to be uh, your digestive system is going to find it a lot harder to digest the food as well so making sure you are keeping hydrated and making sure you why liquid fuel might be a better option for you something that's a little bit cleaner less um, less in that's more sort of um, more a more cleaner source of fuel like if, if it is a banana but um I like I mean I use temple nutrition products which is a um, which has a lot of electrolytes in it as well. Um, it's got your sodium levels, it's got magnesium in it, etc., um, and your essential amino acids. So, um, when you're planning your race, pick points of when you're going to fuel. If it's going to be on the 10k mark, if it's going to be on the 5k mark, it's, if it's going to be a good guide is maybe every 15 minutes you're, you're fueling and stuff like that. And making, if you are on a TT bike or if you're on a road bike, getting aero, nice and aero, depending on, again, again, depending on the course, but getting nice and aero on the bike is going to save you, can save you up to 20% of energy and stuff like that, and, uh, and, and power and as far as speed, etc. Um, when you are cycling with your turning your legs over, try and lift your two big toes so that's going to promote a better circular motion as well. So you're not just putting too much pressure on you, on your quads and your knees. So it's again you're going to be activating your glutes and your hamstrings, and it'll just even out. So you're not going to fatigue in certain spots. If you do find your quads starting to fatigue a little bit, you can push your heels back into your shoes a little bit. So again, that's going to again um, give you more more strength through your hamstrings and your glutes so you're not just again just powering through the quad so you can evenly dispute the the power and the force that you're putting through so you, again you're not going to come to that um, you're not going to come to the run over toasted and it'll just help help just with the biomechanics um, we, if your knees are flaying out try and use the bar as a guide so you're almost skimming the, the bar with your knees so you're keeping that nice hip alignment don't be afraid to break up sections and getting out of the saddle because getting out of the saddle again change your biomechanics of, the, of your body and, and what muscles you're using as well. So again, you're going to be stretching out your hamstrings and using your glutes a little bit. Again, make, remember your, your core is like where your bladder is. So imagine there's a seatbelt running across your bladder. You want to be strong in your core. That's why strength training and Pilates and you, know, you learning how to activate your core is crucial when, with your cycling as well. So same with your, your swimming but and running. But um, having a strong core will help you just keep that strong alignment again so yeah you're just breaking it up and if yeah, you are getting a bit of a climb don't don't be afraid to get it in the right you want to have it in a little bit of a heavier gear than what you would be on on seated so then you can just power up through the hill but don't be afraid to get off your seat and um and grind and grind it up no don't grind but you want to um smash it up the hill um again with with your your gearing now 
I've seen a lot of people just cycling in the one gear or cycling in a low gear. You want to make sure that you're you get you've got resistance in the pedal stroke. So you got so every resolution of you turn over you're going to turn more. So you want to make sure you've got a good good resistance as you're turning around. So you want to make sure it's not not uh you're not freewheeling. You want to have some resistance so it's, uh, it's, it feels uncomfortable to turn the turn the pedals over. So you want to make sure you've got resistance so you're going to get more power f per resolution. You're going to travel more distance per resolution as well. Um, as you come off the bike, a good tip might be just as you're coming in, maybe a couple of minutes beforehand, just knock it down a little bit again, just increasing your cadence maybe to about 100, just so you can spin your legs out a little bit to loosen up your quads and get the fl blood flow back in your quads if you have been putting a lot of pressure on your quads. So it just flushes out, out a little bit. You might feel a little bit easier as you get onto the run. But again, just um, using markers, like every 15 minutes to fuel, um, staying nice and as aero as possible. Um, relax your breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth to keep your heart rate down. If you are going by heart rate, just um, be aware of what your heart rate is. You don't want it too high because then you just you're obviously going to be pushing too hard and you're going to bonk. Um, remember, if you are feeling feeling it, just back it off and just pace yourself. And that's where training comes in to do with pacing. Just use markers. Okay, 5k, 10k. If it is a 20k bike ride or it's 40k, you might go 10k for the half for the half 70.3 for full distance to Ironman. You might want to be looking at um, half hour, 40 minutes, or you might be looking at 30k markers, 20k markers, etc., etc. So just have markers to bring yourself in. Have little mantras on your, on you on as you you swim bike running as well. It might be. Um, how bad do you want it? It might be okay. Uh, just keep relaxed. It's a long day. Um, just uh, think about be gra grateful. Think about the people around you, and um, just have those little little things. And uh, be uncomfortable with being with being being comfortable with, with being uncomfortable. Those sort of things. Um, hope that helps. And um, just again, as you stay nice, relaxed as you dismount the bike and you run into transition and keep cool because you've got another run to go.